The one question on everyone's lips these days is what the heck even is Creative Assembly's plan for the Total War series going forward? Of course, we got some hint to what the immediate future looks like late last year, when a major official announcement let us know about a reorientation of plans, specifically regarding Warhammer 3 and Pharaoh. This plan was followed up on with a new statement in the recent weeks, stating that the improvement of the Shadows of Change DLC was well underway, and of course, even though we'll have to wait for the major changes to Pharaoh, the High Tide DLC, which now is free, arrived on January 25th. I'll have to look more into High Tide myself before giving my opinion on it, but as I said in a previous video, I really like what CA set out to do here. After at least half a year of messing things up, I found their letter of intent and apology refreshing, and at least for the foreseeable future, we received some important information on what we could expect going forward, including a significantly lowered price for Pharaoh and the closer promise of a much bigger map, sort of like an Ultimate Bronze Age campaign. Now, I've been fairly lukewarm to just disinterested in Pharaoh after my review of the game back in November, and haven't really talked about High Tide at all. And so I guess this is a good time as any to talk about what it actually is, since I guess you might know as little as I did before making this video. In short, High Tide is a free update to Total War Pharaoh, with its main selling point being that you can now play as two factions belonging to the Sea Peoples, and from there bring about the collapse of the Bronze Age rather than trying to save it. But where the Sheridan faction is all about pillaging, Pelaset is more of an empire builder, although of course at the expense of the established Egyptian and other kingdoms. We'll get 37 new units and brand new formations, a completely new Forge Your Own Path tradition, but available to every faction, and a new War Spoils Horde mechanic for the Sea Peoples. With these new factions, the Sea Peoples will now benefit from the destruction of the Pillars of Civilization, will have a new Pantheon of Gods, and of course, it will all be free, and added to the now significantly lowered price of Pharaoh. Now, if you are already a fan of the game, I think this is a damn good deal. I mean, it doesn't get much better than a major free update, really. What's even better is of course what I mentioned earlier, namely the promised future campaign map expansion, but also additional mechanics like mortality and succession for characters, and improvements to battles and unit variety. We'll have to see how these changes actually improve the game when they arrive, but for now, I trust that CA Sofia does its best to make this game as good as it can be, despite its likely suboptimal initial sales numbers. Apart from this information though, Creative Assembly hasn't really said anything about plans most of us are waiting for, as in future, unannounced games. There have been supposed leaks from alleged disgruntled former CA employees, stating that neither Medieval 3 nor Empire 2 are even being worked on, and I'm going to take this one with a grain of salt. It might be true, but it might not be, and I won't really say anything in either direction because of it. Frankly, it seems so outrageous that it's hard to believe it even can be true, seeing just how many people want those exact games. But the fact that we haven't heard or seen anything related to either, and that there are no reported leaks saying the opposite, I'm not arguing either here or there, just that it doesn't look particularly great at the moment. If it is true that Medieval 3 and Empire 2 are not coming, at least for the time being, it suggests that the IPs Creative Assembly are working on, because they most certainly are working on something, we just don't know what yet, is something completely different, and likely something non-historical. But if you want something awesomely historical right now, then check out Enlisted, an intense, squad-based first-person shooter available for free on PC and consoles, offering both PvP and PvP action. Fight for the United States, Germany, the Soviet Union, and Japan, command a squad of AI-controlled soldiers, and lead them against the squads of other players, while simultaneously customizing your battle group with new and unlockable weapons, tanks, and even aircraft. Enlisted is special for a number of reasons, but what I particularly love about it are the unique options on the battlefield. As an engineer, you can construct fortifications, machine gun nests or even anti-tank guns, the radio operator can call in artillery or destructive carpet bombing strikes, or being invaluable to your team as a medic. Enlisted is tailor-made for both new and returning players, and is even better with the latest update which introduced a ton of features requested by the community. If you're a new PC registered player, you'll even receive the free USA bonus pack with awesome weapons, 4000 silver, and 3 days of premium account for a limited time. So play Enlisted now for free on PC, PlayStation or Xbox by using my link in the pinned comment or video description. Thank you so much Dragaijin for sponsoring this video. Now, if we assume that this is the case, it's definitely disappointing. I mean, I've been craving sequels to these historical titles for more than a decade. But at the same time, it's not the only things I'd like to see. For all we know, CA might just be working on different historical projects altogether, in a time period or location, either completely or just slightly different from what we've seen before. But if I know Creative Assembly, a massive new project like these games are would be made with the lowest amount of risk in mind. 
Three Kingdoms was a brand new title for sure, but it did take place in China, which at the time had a massive prospective player base, and it proved to be true. But indeed, other than a new Rome, a new medieval, or a new empire, which let's face it, are some of the absolute most popular overarching historical time periods certainly in the West, I can't really think of other eras that as easily can capture as wide of an audience. I might be wrong about that, of course. Paradox, for example, has been very successful with both EU4 and its Victoria series for that matter. But then again, these are vastly different games, and arguably, perhaps different audiences too. This obviously begs the question of what this or these new IPs might be. Is it something Creative Assembly is making from scratch themselves? A completely new fantasy universe we've never seen before? Well, I highly doubt it. But honestly, if done well, I wouldn't be against it. But Creative Assembly and Sega have deep pockets, and they do like to invest heavily in new projects. I mean, the only new project they've ever had that wasn't a historical one was Warhammer after all, one of the largest hobby and fantasy franchises out there. And because of this, I really wouldn't put it past them to try to capture something else, something equally massive or even more universally recognized. Now the largest of such franchises would arguably be the Lord of the Rings, and the reasons are many. It's a near-universally loved fantasy universe. It has a precedence in the strategy genre, stretching back about 20 years, meaning it's wildly overdue for a comeback, Creative Assembly has proven that it can work with fantasy games, and importantly, it seems the Tolkien estate might be more open to games than previously thought, unless that strictly goes for Gollum. And while it might not be a part of the sales pitch, CA is sure to be familiar with the immense love for any kind of Lord of the Rings mods for their games, including the mods for both Rome, Medieval 2, and Attila. Alternatively, Game of Thrones or Song of Ice and Fire series is another possible contender for a neutral war franchise. Here, there's ample room for opening up the map with several games if previous Total War games are anything to go by. It's highly inspired by history, but with lighter fantasy elements and a massive threat that shakes up the world. In many ways, a Game of Thrones Total War could function kinda like Attila did actually, or it even sounds quite similar to the first Warhammer game. While perhaps not as beloved as Lord of the Rings, it certainly has a massive mainstream and niche appeal, as it indeed offers that magical formula of medieval fantasy that people just can't seem to get enough of. But there's always the chance that Creative Assembly has had enough with relying on other IPs to base their games on. Perhaps they will indeed continue with fantasy, but create their very own universe, kind of like what Bethesda did with the Elder Scrolls back in the day. While this again to me seems highly unlikely, especially considering the current state of the company, I'd be totally up for something new, as long as it's filled with passion and detail. Now, I've only really offered up two new fantasy universes here, and that's because I can't really see any other universe have as big of an appeal as these, other than perhaps Warhammer 40k. But again, we've heard nothing of that one really, and I've already covered this in a previous video, so I won't speculate further until there's more to know. What I am interested in knowing though, and what I wish to hear much more about, is Creative Assembly's relationship with Feral Interactive. Now, I've talked a lot about how I desperately want Feral to do more Total War remasters. That is, as long as Creative Assembly don't do it themselves. Feral literally made Medieval 2 for iOS and Android, so it's only a natural step to bring this game in a refreshed version on PC as well, where it surely would be given a completely new life by both the players and the modders. But this got me thinking. As phones and mobile devices get stronger and stronger every year, what if Medieval 2 Remastered isn't on the docket at all? What if Rome Remastered's disappointing sales numbers meant the axe for any future similar projects? And instead, Feral has been put on the job of creating an Empire Total War for mobile. Personally, I don't think this is a far-fetched idea at all. I mean, I thought it was crazy when Rome made it to phones back in the 2010s, and the fact that Medieval 2 runs so well on modern mobile hardware, well, it suggests to me that why can't this be done with Empire as well? And why would Feral and Creative Assembly stop at Medieval 2? There's absolutely no reason for them to do that. In fact, they almost have more reason to make Empire than the previous games. Empire, as a firepower game, is arguably much more suited for touch-based games and sword-based games, simply because the act of maneuvering is much less moment-to-moment -moment based in the former. In addition, seeing how Empire is a massive visual step up from both Rome and Medieval 2, neither of which are actually quote-unquote remastered in the mobile versions by the way, I think Empire could reach a significantly larger audience as well. And don't forget that Feral already worked with Empire to port it to Max back in the day. Empire's visuals alone would make it one of the best looking mobile games on the market even now, which goes back to something I've talked about for a while now. Total War games were so far ahead of their time over a decade ago, with Empire and Napoleon especially still looking gorgeous even today. 
As such, I honestly wouldn't be surprised, although I'd definitely be disappointed if Empire for Mobile were to be announced in about a year's time, and Immutable 2 Remastered wasn't. Personally, the future of Total War games is so up in the air at the moment that it's hard to nail down anything really especially since EA is so secretive about any real future developments. And so if I had to give any advice, I'd say that at this point, there's frankly little to nothing we can do to speed things up or have stuff revealed to us. Things will come in their due time. And you know what? When we've been waiting for news of a grand new historical game for years, well, it sucks. But in the meantime, and perhaps indefinitely, we have so many good options out there, right here in the Total War community. We have two amazing substitutes for a Total War Rome 3, and that is the Rome Total Realism Imperium Surrecta mod for Rome Remastered, which is just unbelievably massive, and DVD at Impera for Rome 2, which brings so much more depth and immersion to that game. We have equally two options for a Medieval 3 substitute, which are the Stainless Steel Historical Improvement Project for Medieval 2, which makes that game so much deeper, larger, historically accurate, and more hardcore than Medieval 2 ever was, and of course, Medieval Kingdoms 1212 AD for Total War Attila, which brings a much needed visual update, seeing how it's based on Attila, but what's more is that it actually implements mechanical overhauls like a new Holy Roman Empire system. If you've been craving an Empire 2, the amazing PUA mod for Empire truly does feel like at least an Empire Remastered, in that it offers so much more than the base game does and does so with improved visuals, a bunch of new units and factions, and so on. And if you've been wanting a Lord of the Rings Total War, well, the Dawnless Days got you covered. For now with custom battles with beautifully crafted units and battlefields, but soon enough with an entirely new campaign on the horizon. That's of course not to mention the myriads of other fantastic mods out there, but I wanted to give you an overview over which mods that deal specifically with what you might want out of new games in each series. And I think these fit the build perfectly, especially considering that they only get better over time, mainly since they are still being worked on and improved upon. If you think you know what Total War's future holds, do let me know in the comments. But until that time, enjoy some historical battlefields in Enlisted on PC, PlayStation and Xbox, and take up arms against both AI squads and other human players in these World War II battlefields. Play now for free, and if you sign up on PC, you'll also receive the US bonus pack, 4000 silver, and 3 days of premium tier account status for a limited time. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you so much to Gaijin for sponsoring this video. Cheers!